Okay, so now I'm actually going to start talking about the super easy ways to make basic interfaces or whatever I called it. Um, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to type here or actually show you some examples of me using the library. And I'm going to start with the more basic features and I'm only going to touch on the kind of basic features. There are some more advanced things that um, you can talk to me later about. Okay, um, the basic premise of, uh, yes. My ba the basic premise here is that if we take a well-specified Python function and we use the, um, the inspect.signature method or um, function, we can find out a lot about the function. So let's run this so you can see what it, what it does. Um. Yeah. So, so oh. Oh, I changed the name. OK. Oh, what? Oh, no, no, that's what I was supposed to do. Uh, OK, sorry. This is a pretty bad start. Yeah. OK. So I ran this, and now I have this s object that tells me a lot about the function. Here's the function to remind you. So I can see um, the parameters, and I can see carg1 has a default of 100. This is only available in Python 3.3 up, I'm pretty sure. In older versions, you have inspect.getArgSpec. Yeah, and inspect.getFullArgSpec. But um, this one's nicer. Um, so this is the small part of, of the library. And the library is called Heretu. Um, I'll get to the name in a bit. But this is kind of the, the most. Um, this is the fundamental Python thing. The rest is kind of just like putting things together. So, yeah. So now, um, I'll just well, I'll I'll tell you later. When I get bored of showing you this stuff, I will uh, tell you why it's called Horatu, or you can read about it on the documentation. So, um, I'm just going to start giving you some examples of using it. This first very simple program. I, I made a function that kind of doesn't need to exist, um, but made it anyway. The logarithm, and all it does is it calls the logarithm from the math library. And then I just call Horetu command line interface on the, on the function, and then I can run it. So this, all my files are called numbers, and I'm just going in order. So this one's called number one, I think. And well, let's start by typing in 200, and I should get the base 10 logarithm of 200, because it'll go in here. Oops, I messed up. The problem is that um, I wasn't parsing it. Let's just do the help for now. Yeah, so, so um, when I do this, the code gets all the way down to this point, and then it parses all the arguments, and it decides that I ask for help, so it's going to show me the help. Uh, is this making sense so far? OK. I got some nods and no shaking, so maybe that's good. Yeah. Now, um, but yes, but we had this problem. This didn't work. And that's because a float is required, because the inputs, the inputs come as strings. So if you're parsing from the command line, you'll have to convert it to a, a float, as I do in this version. So the only thing I changed between these two versions is I added this float cast. So now when we do number two, which the present file is called number two, it works. So that it, what happened here is Horetu parsed the, uh, figured out that what the attributes of this function are. It parsed the, um, the um, arguments and sent the only option to this function. And then this function parses a float and called math.log and then returned it and then Horetu knew to print it. The, the um, annoying thing though is if I give it something that's not a float, it still gives me this annoying Python error. And this is great if you're actually using Python, but if you want to give this to someone else who doesn't want Python, or I just think this doesn't look very pretty, um, maybe you want to have a different error message. So what you can do, um, this is the only feature I'm going to mention that's, that's in the development version. Everything else is in the present version that's on PyPI. Uh, a thing you can do is instead of, instead of putting it over here, you can put it in the annotation. And this is a feature that's available in Python 3 up. You can, um, 
in case you don't know, there are, um, you can put meaningless annotations on all these arguments, and then you can, um, you can decide what they mean with the inspect um, module. So I've decided that if you put float here, it'll, it'll just call this function on the input before it goes in. So it, um, so it, it works the same way. I, in, in this version, this is number three. I removed, I removed float from here, and I moved it up here. So if I give it valid input, it still works. But the different thing is that if you give it invalid input, it prints the error more nicely. So now we'll go on to version four. So what I changed here is I, um, well, changed the doc string, and I also added another parameter. Maybe now's a good time to, to show you the, um, to, to point out the, the doc string automatically gets, gets printed over here. So, um, so here it says calculate the logarithms. If I add garbage over here, and I ask for the help over here, I'll get garbage over here. Note, um, this, this thing in, in the, here doesn't matter. I only, I only look at the float that's, that's over here. So if I, if I remove this, it's, it still works fine. Yeah, so here I say I have a one positional argument, or one, yeah, one positional argument and one keyword argument. And then Horetu interprets that as um, we have one required positional argument over here, and we have one optional keyword argument over here. And if we don't say anything, in the previous version, I, I hard-coded the, the, um, the base of the logarithm to 10. In this version, I said you can specify it, but the default is still 10. So if I give it 200, I still get the same answer. This is number four, right? Yes. But if I say base um, 100, I get a different answer. So now we'll go on to number five, and here what I'm changing is I'm just adding the, doc, the, the, um, the documentation for the base. Okay, so here it says base is undocumented. That's what happens if you don't put it in the doc string. But if you put it in the doc string, it instead um, puts what it says whatever, whatever's in the doc string. And otherwise, I didn't change anything in that version, right? And what did I change here? Oh, okay. Yeah, and then in version six, I decided, well, I have logarithms, but maybe I want to do the inverse. I want to raise numbers to powers. So, so I made this other function, power. Previously, previously the call was just horetu.cli and then one function. But if I give it a list of functions, it'll do something different. So to remind you, this is what the help looked like for the old version with just one function. And for the new version, for the new version with two functions, the help looks like this. It says you must select one of these two subcommands, and then after that, you can give it the number, you can give it the arguments. And it also tells us for more help, you can run help with a particular subcommand. So let's do logarithm again. This is the same help as before, just. Um, It's the same help as before, just, um, just the signature is different. So now it says run the main command and then run the subcommand. And of course, we also have the other one, which corresponds to this function. And so the exponent that comes from over here, here it takes two positional arguments. So it, it comes out as two required arguments over here. Now let's go on to the next change. The only thing I changed here is before I gave it a list, and now I'm giving it a dictionary with, um, let's skip this one for now, with, I say, the, the name mapping to the function. And it'll give, me the same, it'll give me the same result. But this is neat because then I can change the name of the subcommands. So in number eight, this is the same except that I added names over here. Uh, instead of calling it logarithm, I'm calling it lower, and I'm calling it raise instead of power. And you can also give a name to the, to the whole thing. So here, by default, it uses the name of the file, 
the, the zero uh, sysarg. But if you say name over here, it'll use that instead. So let me, okay, that's number eight. So, so here it said zero seven power, and when we do eight, um, well, it gives us an error because there's no, there's no power subcommand anymore, but now it says math. And so now if we say raise, because that's what I changed it to, it gives us the same help. Now, number 10, I skipped nine. Um, here I'm just showing you can, you can nest these subcommands as much as you like. So here we have, so this is what we had before, and now I'm just adding all this pointless subcommands. Um, and we'll see a problem with the len fun function because it's a weird built-in, and the built-ins are a bit weird. But um, yeah, so raise still works the same way, but if I do the main help, it, gives, it lists all the different subcommands. And then if I do the help, yeah, if I do the help for this one, say, it'll tell me, well, just to be clear here, The doc string of len is return the number of items in a container. And, and uh, yeah, and, and that's what it says, return the number of items in a container. Now, the thing is, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, so, so if I give it a string of whatever length, it should tell me, oh, it works, cool. It wasn't working before. And because it wasn't working, sometimes the built-ins are a bit weird, and like the signature is not how it, the signature that, that you get from the inspect a signature function is a bit different from what it actually is. So I had made this wrapper around it because I thought it was a problem, but actually I guess it was a bug and I fixed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so that's the next one we can skip, but yeah. But the other reason, yeah, the other reason to, um, actually I should go back to that. The other reason to wrap it is then you can put your own, your own doc string in. So if I instead want to call it x instead of obj, it works the same way, but now if I ask for the help, you know, I do something else. Okay, now the next version I decided, here I, I, um, I say the inputs to logarithm are number and base, and the inputs to power are number and exponent. But I thought I wanted to make these names consistent. So instead I said, uh, oh, no, that's not this one. Is it this one? Yeah. Uh, did I skip one? Maybe I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you now. Okay. So, so number 11, which is the one we just did, um, where, I, where we did len, the, the nested len thing. And yeah, and I say that, and it gives me that. Um, maybe I should have asked this earlier. Can people see? Or can people not see? Oh, good. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and I have 10 more minutes? OK. Um, yeah, so this is a, so a number 11 is like this. But Heretu can also make command, uh, uh, web interfaces, WSGI applications. So this, in the version 12, the only thing I changed is instead of calling Horetu.cli, I said application equals Horetu.wizgi. And then if I do this, um, well, I also made this little note to remind me how I should run it. Yes, OK. OK, if I do this, then it starts the, the web server with microwizgi. And then I can go open it over here. Oh. Um, um, let's, oh, what did I do wrong? None type is not, oh well. I'll figure out what's wrong later. It works, just not, not right now. <laughs> mm. I wonder if this is a bug in the d development version, so I could switch it to, no, um, well, it makes WSGI interfaces, sorry. Um, 
you can pretend they don't exist because you know it, it seems broken here, and maybe you don't trust me. But yeah, um, but uh, the WSGI interface does the same thing. If you instead of using um, hyphens, it uses um, query string arguments. Uh, instead of positional arguments, it uses directories in the path. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so let's move on to not the WSGI interface, and we can figure out what's wrong later with that. Mm. What did I change here? Oh yeah, so now, now here's the point where I started um, making the names consistent. So here I said, in, in the power function, we're going to call it base as well. And I reversed the order. So now both of them take base. One of them take, logarithm takes number and returns exponent. Power takes exponent and returns number, just to be more consistent with the naming. But otherwise, it hasn't changed. So, yeah. Um, but that's neat because now, um, in number 14, I'm, um, I'm saying let's use a configuration file. So I made this. Um, Configuration file where I say the base is equal to two, and so let's say thirteen lower ten. The logarithm of ten is one. I'll do one hundred to be more clear. Yeah, um, but then I can say base is uh, three, and then it'll give me a different number. I can do the same thing with number fourteen. I can remove it. Um, and here it's using base 2 because the configuration file says 2. But if I change the base to like 20, it'll give me a different number. And I can, of course, as I showed you before, I can still override it over here. Yeah. So that's the configuration file. Um, the web interface, pretend it worked. And uh, yeah, OK. And then we can add. Um, just for fun, we can add some more, some more arguments. Um, yeah. So here I said that you can set the output prefix. So we could say like, um, oh, I don't have. Well, mm, I have a dollar sign on my keyboard and no, no, uh, no euro sign. Um, and then, yeah, okay, silly, but um, but we could put that in here too. Well, I guess we don't need that. And then, yeah, and you can also set it to have different. Um, here I'm using I'm merging the variables for the com configuration file for all the sections, but you could have separate sections in the configuration file for separate sections. Um, let's see, maybe I will. Eh. Well, yeah, I'll skip this one, and skip that one. Oh yeah, this is a fun one. Yeah. So if you install this program. Um, you can put it on here so everyone can see. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. This program, it connects to the Wi Fi, and this is a kind of neat way of making, well, big programs, but also small programs. Um, so I, I had my one, one function to check whether you're connected to the Wi-Fi right, or to the internet right now, whether you're authenticated, one to connect, one to disconnect, and one to watch every so many seconds. And then, um, and then I just call all four of them. And then, and then you can see here all the options. It's quite easy. Oh, what? It didn't work. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, I I'll just want to comment on where it's appropriate to use Horetu and where you should consider other things. I I want it to be a general purpose thing for any Python function. You just throw at any Python function and it tries to come up with something reasonable. And if you did your Python function well, it can come up with something even more reasonable. And then if you add some special custom things like the annotations, you can make it even a bit nicer. But 
Um, so, so it's easier to talk about what it doesn't do, because I'm trying to make it pretty general. Um, so it only works if you're OK with whatever like, garbage Heretu gives you. Well, maybe it's not garbage, but like, it's fine if it's something where your main product is not the interface. It's, it's something else, and then the interface to the product, like, um, well, I don't know, or, or if it's a very simple one, like this, this connection to the, command, to the um, internet. I don't really care so much about the interface. It's just that I figured out what the right requests were to send. But if the main novelty in your software is indeed the interface, then you might want more control than I give you here, especially for the web interface. I'm, I'm plan currently, I only support get requests in the web interface. I'm thinking about adding more requests, but still, there, I think it would be hard to do headers. There are some headers you can deal with. You could do it on your own with some other library that inspects the, um, the stuff. But um, yeah. So uh, yeah. It's also, um, it's like, well, at least the command line interface is, is too, too good to use in work. So like, if, if you're in a job, it's really important that you do complicated software that breaks a lot and it's hard to use, because then you'll be stressed out all the time. If you use like Horetsu, you might, you might not work at all, because you don't have to, because it's too easy. And, and if you are using, stress, using broken software, then, then maybe your, your bosses and your clients would like it because they have hard workers working for them. And also, you'll feel like you're doing something very challenging. And then the other, the other issue is it's, right now, it's only a command line interface and WSGI. So if you want, for example, a chatbot or a Django admin subcommand, I'm thinking about it. And if you want something else, you can talk to me. But right now, only CLI and WSGI and configuration file. And then the last thing is it requires Python 3.3 or higher because of the inspect signature function. Yeah. And, that's, and, and I guess I had. Uh, I was planning on copying all of these to the Slido, but I forgot to. I thought it would be funny. You can get the presentation here, the documentation here, uh, free ticket to Budapest here, install it here, and get the. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there are some questions for you. Oh, yes, right. Um, yeah. Yes. So, um, can, uh, um, I'll do the easier ones first. The second one, oh, how, how, uh, the second one, why do I use the way I did it rather than the GNU conventions? Um, there was some reason I thought it was annoying to deal with two hyphens versus one hyphen, but also I've been using lately Fossil and some other, Fossil and NMH, and they both did the same style where it's a single hyphen and it just takes the, oh, I didn't, I didn't really show this. It takes the, you can give it any unambiguous prefix. So, um, oh, um, yeah. So I can say, yeah, but I, I can say base uh, two, but I can also just say ba two or b two. And I thought um, for something that automatically configures it, I thought this was an easier way if I wanted to do like, you can do base, and you can also do B. I, the only thing was adding like the single character, because then if you had conflicting ones, then, then what I do about that. So um, that just seemed like an easy way to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I lost the first one now. Can you put the first one back? Uh, what? Oh, OK, OK, good. Um, I set up uh, Python 2 so it returns the same nice error as when I put the wrong type. Yeah, so I had an earlier version of um, where I used a decorator, and I said uh, it worked something like this. It was like um, def uh, f, and I said like whatever. Uh, well, that doesn't work. Um, right, something like this, and so that was not it. That was, and it would even it would even work for like, for like um, it even worked for like this, but um, I think this the main issue was with Python two. Well, anything lower than three point three was it wasn't as good of a signature inspection function, and that combined. That made it hard to do like, certain edge cases, and certain things in here were difficult. I don't remember exactly which ones, but I think it was 
I don't, I don't remember exactly which ones, yeah. There's, there's also some signature things that are not supported in Python 2. Like you can't do, um, I don't remember if you can do like this, where you have a keyword argument before the splat. You can't, okay, and you definitely can't do this one um, either. So, uh, so that's why I decided I just don't care about Python 2. I also like, I was only put making it work in Python 2 because some people asked for it to work in Python 2, but I was like, no, I just, I don't care. I just, I, I don't even, yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, the, this, this, this next one, does it support double hyphen to separate arguments from parameters? It does. Uh, I'll show you to prove it. <laughs> um, so, so this should give us an error. Oh, yeah, see, uh, yeah, could not convert, yeah. Whereas if, it, if I hadn't put the double hyphen, then yeah. Okay, um, Google style and NumPy style doc strings. It's probably very easy. So this is, a, uh, I'll go on a fun, I'll use this as an excuse to go on a fun tangent. Um, I thought at first that there must be some nice parser in Sphinx that I should use to parse the doc strings. It turns out that the parser is very complicated. I don't exactly know whether there's a good reason for the complexity. I probably there sort of is, because it's going through many layers of the stack. But in the end, it's just a regular expression. So I just wrote my own regular expression rather than importing theirs. Um, and I think, I think Napoleon, which is the thing for converting them, also uses a regular expression. So I guess I could do that. Um, so uh, I don't know. But I really like to sleep. so like. I only work on this when, like, I, f I don't know, I get bored and, and maybe, or maybe I want something myself, but if someone convinces me that he or she wants Google or NumPy style doc strings, it's probably very easy to uh, get me to write it. Uh, what? Oh, well, I don't use GitHub, but you can send me a patch or you can, I use, I'm using Fossil, so you can um, check out the repository and send me yours or, I guess you know if you did it in Git, I wouldn't mind. I would, but I kind of like don't like GitHub because it's proprietary. And now I stopped using Git, so I'm not that into GitHub. And yeah, but you can give me a Git request pull. That that I'm totally happy with. Yeah. Now um, doc up internally. Um, so previously, I, the first version I implemented it with arg parse, and eventually when I was when I wanted to add the web support, I realized it would be easier to separate that. So actually, I can show you the diagram of the, the pretty diagram of the architecture. Oh, and I also need to show you this diagram, because I, I didn't tell you about why it's called Horetu. Um, OK, so um, the point is, uh, no, I mean, th this, I, this is stupid. I shouldn't show you this, because like, I have to explain it all. I don't have time. Um, but, uh, it's very separated. Uh, arg parse, it had too many things all together. And also, arg, some things like subcommands, I managed to get them working in arg parse, but they were kind of annoying. So I am going to reuse the arg parse code for the Django subcommand, because I couldn't, it seemed just nicer to use arg parse, because that's what Django, or Django managed pi commands use. Uh, so uh, what was the question? Perhaps it's, yeah. So, so the reason I would, so now the reason, I, I think the reason is because it was just easier for me to write my own parser. But if there was a good a situation where there's like some framework that uses docop internally, then maybe I would write an output format for, sub, for commands in that framework as I am started working on for Django. Yeah. Any like questions from people who want to like raise their hand and, and, and ask? Cool. Uh, what about um, collecting options into lists? What about collection, collecting options into lists? I think I have that. I had it before and I forgot. So, um, uh, is it like, uh, uh, um, when you have like uh, dash of some value dash of again? Ah, okay. I, I, don't, I, I used to have this. I don't remember if I do now, but um, it's easy to get me to add it back. Um, I, I, changed, I, I rewrote a lot of stuff when I was moving away from arg parse, and I didn't put it all back yet. But I, I made something where you could say, like, uh, yeah, where you could, uh, let's do a new one. Or you could say like, uh, um, and then, well, I guess you could say uh, something like this, and then if you did that, it would it would um, it would allow you to sub se select set multiple, and it would show up in it would, 
And also, you could do this. You could say it's a list of int. And I think I didn't, I didn't allow any more than that. But the other thing, um, actually, yeah, you can do a list of int. And if you wanted a really complicated list, you could write your own function. So if you wanted a list of things that were all files, you could say, well, something like this. So this would, um, so I, yeah. So you can make your own complicated thing. Um, this this means it opens a file, but it gives you an error if um, the file doesn't exist, and it opens it as a file pointer. And now, because this is a cool example, I want to remove the thing that might not actually work. So I can say, yeah. So now we can say like, then you can do, um, you can do something like this now. And the neat thing here is that. Um, this would also work in Python. You could give it a file pointer. You wouldn't have to give it a string. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you consider moving all the type information into doc string only? Moving what to doc string? The type, the types. Uh huh. Did I consider moving the types to doc string? Originally, I wanted to, I wanted to like do the, f use, do the annotation and then fall back to the doc string, but it was really annoying to parse it because. Um, I couldn't come up with a way to figure out which file the, the function came from. Like, you get it, uh, how does that work? I think classes, you get the, name, the full name of the class or something. But, but, but then I was just talking to someone recently, and he suggested that actually it's better not to use a doc string because like, the doc string isn't um, validated as well as the rest of Python is. So I think, there's, I, I, I think I'm quite happy sticking with not doing that. The other nice thing, if I, sometimes I like to do this in the doc string. Um, Blah blah blah, and or so, something like this, where it's not a valid function, and yeah. So that's another. That's so I'm I'm happy with not parsing the doc string, not parsing the doc string for the types. Yeah. So what about the name? Oh yes, yes. So um, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. Uh, so I, I name my, my it's, it's really hard to name things and to do cache invalidation, so I try not to do either. So the way I name things is I bang on my keyboard like this. And so one day, the god of argument parsing, Horetu, spoke to me, and he told me to bang this on my keyboard. And I use a Dvorak keyboard. So this is H and the R and the T are all right next to each other, and the O and the E and the U are all right next to each other. And so that's kind of what came out that day. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, so thank you very much.